I was doing my weekly shopping in the town square, as they had just opened some new market stalls. They sold your typical wares, fruit, vegetables, meat, but one caught my eye. It was a small tent with all sorts of goods placed on a short wooden table. In all honesty, I was going to walk past it and continue, but I had noticed something that made my eyes widen and sparkle. In the middle of the dull plank sat a shiny, almost new Sega Saturn. I remember playing some of my favorite games on Sega hardware, such as Sonic 2 and Streets of Rage. However, something about it struck me as odd. Not the system itself, but the games that came with it. Sitting next to the black box were six titles. Nights into Dreams, Sonic Jam, Bug, Sonic 3D, Flicky's Island, and to my surprise, Panzer Dragoon Saga. One of the most valuable games on the system, and a mysterious game I had only ever heard about in magazines or online articles. Sonic Extreme. This was certainly weird, since Sonic Extreme was never released officially, but at the time of writing this, fans have found the game's source code and are currently reviving the project, so maybe a version they found was put on a blank Saturn disc so people could play it without an emulator. What was even stranger was the case for the game. It was a typical CD case, but instead of the covers being blank, there was box art, a rating, and even a black cover. The only time Sonic Extreme ever had anything resembling box art was a concept sketch used as a template for what the final box art might have been. But they never got around to drawing up a final version due to the game's cancellation. I immediately asked the man at the counter for the cost of the system, and he priced it at a merely £79.99, quite cheap for such a valuable system. I gave him the money and drove home to play my new collection of games. After about two hours of testing each title to see if they even worked, there was only one game left, Sonic Extreme. I was excited. I was finally about to play the Sonic game that never was. The Sega Saturn splash screen started up and all of the pieces of the logo flew in to fit the intended shape. But as the logo showed up, the system froze. No menu or copyright screen showed, and any button I pressed did nothing. The system had crashed. I turned it off, ejected the Sonic Extreme disc, and went to bed. The next day, I woke up and turned on the Saturn again to see if Sonic Extreme would work. And to my surprise, it did. I picked up my controller and began to play the game. A black screen faded in, and a logo began swirling around and bending across the screen. Eventually, it snapped to the center and read Sonic Extreme. There were three options underneath it, single player, two player, and option. The latter two didn't work, so I selected single player, and a cutscene occurred. Sonic was lying down in the middle of a field with his friend Tails, when the blue sky turned a shadowy black color. He opened his eyes and the camera panned up to reveal a huge object. It looked like the Death Egg, Dr. Robotnik's space station featured in Sonic 2, 3, 4, and Generations. Sonic got up and started running and the screen faded to black. The game loaded its first level, it was the generic Sonic Green Hill level with more of a jungle vibe than the other levels of this variety. The game had a fisheye lens that made it look like a sphere. In a lot of cases, this helped immensely with platforming, as I could see more of what was ahead. Initially, I had thought it was disorienting, but I had gotten used to it. The enemies consisted of your typical badniks, such as a flying bee robot, a fish robot that would hop around in pools of water, and a chameleon that shot projectiles at you. But there were some... unorthodox designs for other badniks than what was typical of the series, such as a robot with three drills on it, a rolling wheel with spikes on it, and a boomerang that would chase Sonic. The music was a very calming bongo drum beat, mixed in with a pleasant acoustic guitar. There were segments where Sonic would have to hit a switch to activate a hidden path, and there were some crumbling bridges that would lead you into spikes, but the level was fairly easy. The boss was a cat-looking mech, which would leap at Sonic and swipe at him with laser claws. After a few hits, its head would fly off, revealing Robotnik and his classic Eggmobile piloting it. He now had two new attacks. He would shoot lasers out of the mech's paws and perform a spin attack that would send him bouncing across the room. The game ran completely different in the boss battles than in the regular levels. For instance, the fisheye lens had gone and in its place was a flat battlefield with no features whatsoever other than a colorful texture on the ground. Sonic ran a lot faster, and the area rotated around him. After a few hits, the boss was destroyed and the game displayed a results screen. After my score was totaled, the game faded to black to load the next zone. Red Sand Zone. 
This zone was a desert themed level, with a lot of pyramids, tombs, traps, and even a sphinx at the end of the third act, which Sonic would run into to finish the zone. The music was very slow, with a Middle Eastern mood to it. There were quicksand traps that you would have to jump over, and dart guns that you would have to run past. The level design was more treacherous than Jade Gully, making for a huge difficulty spike. The enemies included a mummy robot that limped towards Sonic, an Anubis robot that would drag Sonic towards nearby quicksand, and the Tri-Drillers from Jade Gully. There were a lot of spikes and fireballs that would jump from the many pits of lava scattered throughout the levels. The boss was a sphinx robot that would try to smash Sonic with its extremely large stone hands. And unlike the big cat robot, the robot was fought on a single platform floating in the sky instead of an arena. In a completely 2D perspective, as I was about to defeat him, the graphics started to flicker and glitch, creating some weird images and patterns. Shortly after the barrage of colors, the game locked up and emitted a loud, buzzing noise. I took the disc out, expecting to see a ton of scratches, but to my surprise, there weren't any. I restarted the Saturn only to see that the game had saved my place. No splash screen or title screen, just the boss arena. Minus the boss, Sonic was just standing there, facing towards the screen. And the game had loaded the next level. Crystal Frost Zone. The zone was a winter wonderland style level, complete with icicles, snow, slippery ground, and light hail that would fade in and out every few seconds. The only enemies were the Tri-Drillers, but instead of just floating around like the first two zones, they were hidden beneath the snow waiting to ambush Sonic. They looked different. Instead of the googly-eyed orbs with drills on the sides and tops, they looked more menacing, with a darker color than their usual vibrant red, and shiny, angry eyes. The drills had spikes on the sides, and the robot itself had a mouth lined with sharp, bludgeoning teeth, and this certainly disturbed me, but I wasn't going to let it stop me. The music was slow, very slow, with deep bass tones playing sporadically, and a chilling twinkle making up the melody. The boss was pathetically easy. It was a snowman robot that would throw snowballs at you. Surprise, right? There wasn't much to talk about, the big cat was harder than it. After it was destroyed, the game didn't even load the next zone. Instead, Sonic just stood there, with a worried expression on his face as a cold wind swept in. Suddenly, a violent buzzard of glitch sprites erupted from the right side of the screen, covering the poor hedgehog in jumbled characters, enemies, snow, and ice. When it ended, Sonic was nowhere to be seen, and the screen faded out. Here you had degarbled text. After that screen had faded out, I was expecting the next zone to load. But it didn't. Sonic's sprite faded in, and I was given control, but there was nowhere to take him, as I was trapped in nothing but a black void. After a few minutes of just running around, the sprite glitched out. Then Sonic did an animation I hadn't even seen. Even when I lost a life, he just pulled a sad face, fell to his knees, and passed out, and the game loads the next zone, which was titled the Blue Ocean Zone. This was a water level similar to the Labyrinth Zone in Sonic 1. It was an ancient ruin with traps similar to red sands, only instead of quicksand or lava there were spike pits. The enemies consisted of tri-drillers and a multitude of fish robots that would either shoot projectiles or chase Sonic. The music was very calming and mellow, a stark contrast to the difficulty of the level. The boss was a giant electric eel robot that would shoot lightning in all directions and electrocute the floor. Overall. It wasn't much of a challenge, but it did take a while before I destroyed it. After the results screen appeared, the game didn't fade to black. Instead, another cutscene played. Sonic laid down on the floor of the arena and sighed as he started to drown. As he lost air and got paler and paler until he became nothing but a lifeless husk, the graphics became a scrambled mess, and it loaded the next zone. Metal Blade Zone the level was a mechanical metropolis level and the home of the infamous Metal Sonic boss fight seen in many magazines and promotional videos. The aesthetics of the zone were very grim and out of place. Many buildings were on fire, some were charred, vehicles were smashed up, and there were bones scattered across the floor. This was the hardest zone in the game, with tight platforming challenges and a lot of death traps to keep me on my toes. The enemies were the Tri-Drillers, and the wheels and the boomerangs from Jade Gully, except they were on fire and hell-bent on ripping Sonic to shreds. The music was quieter and more ominous, with an electric guitar for the melody and a deep bass guitar for the beat. Like I said before, Sonic, or Metal Sonic, 
was the boss, and he was huge, about three times the size of Sonic. He would fly around the room and shoot lightning bolts, then charge straight ahead. He was fast, aggressive, and unpredictable. But I managed to beat him. I was waiting for another cutscene to play, like what happened at the end of the previous two zones, but the game entered its glitch state again, forcing me into another void stage. Again, as you can tell, it was esque, the title screen rather, was esque garbled text. This time there were features, there were features exactly, right there to guide me in the right direction, unlike before. Gray poles were lining a long path that if I diverged from, I would fall into a bottomless pit and die, so I had to be careful. After a while of running down this bland road, I was thrown into a platforming section which was quite a challenge to complete. The Sonic did his glitchy animation from the previous void and lost a life, and that was strange. As it should have loaded the next level, but I had to do this one again. The process repeated about four times, and then it loaded the final challenge. Galaxy Fortress. The name is a bit misleading, but I digress. The level was quite off, even considering what Metal Blade looked like. The walls were a deep purple color, while the floor was a deep black color. All the previous enemies returned, now with rather menacing redesigns. The textures on everything were glitchy, almost corrupted, creating some very wacky images. There were segments where... Sonic was in space and had an extremely cruel time limit to get through a nearby airlock and continue on. At the end of the second act, right as I was about to pass the goalpost, Sonic's sprite glitched out and began to fly in all directions across the screen. A few seconds after it started, the textures of the level flickered and suddenly went crazy, even glitchier than they were before, creating an image so bright and distracting that it actually gave me a headache. I covered my eyes and walked out of the room. But as I was about to shut the door, the Saturn emitted an ear-splitting noise that sounded like a mix between a buzz, TV static, and a high-pitched shriek. I immediately turned off the system as, I, as quickly as the sound had arrived. It had left. I relaxed, knowing that all was now silent. Upon restarting the Saturn, I got a blank screen with Game Over scrawled in glitchy red letters. No matter what I did, I couldn't access the title screen or anything else. I was just stuck on that intimidating screen forever. I ejected the disc from the Saturn, put it in its case, and left it in the corner of my bookshelf, hidden behind DVD cases and books. Sonic Extreme, a strange disc. No points on the originality for that uh, title there, but this is an interesting creepypasta on a Sonic game that never actually released. History details that this game was to initially come out on the Sega Saturn, but was unfortunately cancelled, as well as another game called Sonic Extreme, also supposed to come out on the Xbox, leaving as far to my knowledge, making it that the Sega Saturn was actually the one console from Sega that had no core Sonic release. So while Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot were doing their thing, Sonic was all but present. So how do you make a creepypasta on an unreleased game? With screenshots, mind you, we'll get into that in a bit. For one, this was kind of just a classic spooky gaming tale, no crazy plushies or overarching meta story. It was just the game, and I'm glad it was just the game. Sonic creepypastas are not known for their great, amazing extra lore that gets tacked on, let's be, let's be fair there. As far as it being creepy though, it's a little questionable. Sure, some glitchy stuff happens and sh Sonic shows a sad face, and really, that scares you? I mean, hell, some of the stuff in Sonic 1-3 to and Sonic CD that's actually just normally there is kinda creepier than what was showcased in this creepypasta. I mean, what, so you get glitch hell? Ooh, big deal. That sort of kills the whole thing, but regardless, it is still intriguing. And I think that's what makes Sonic such a great catalyst for creepypastas. It's sort of formatted in a way to keep some interest. You always wonder what's gonna happen in the next level, where things are gonna end up. You always are interested in what the worlds are gonna look like, what enemies they'll even contain, and just the general nonsense that is definitely bound to occur. What adds to that is the uh, technical feasibility shown here. And Sonic creepypastas are kind of great for that. I've never actually pointed that out as I'm pointing it out here. But technical technical feasibility, technical stuff in any creepypasta, if, if it's good, that really adds to what the creepypasta, that makes it good, trust me. It, it adds bonus points, even if those points are gonna get further destroyed by something stupid in the creepypasta itself. But that definitely helps give it that big push up. 
Over here in the game, it's uh, not hard to obtain the actual Sonic Extreme files themselves. Uh, source code exists out there, and people, you know, fans themselves have remade the entire game and custom engines from the source code, and you can check them out. The game plays with this fisheye perspective. Although the events seen here in this creepypasta are exclusive to them, I'm sure they can be technically added into the game. As far as playing, as on, playing it on an actual Sega Saturn, though, it's a little far-fetched. Some screenshots here allude to that, with taskbar shown and game review watermarks still present in these screenshots. Uh, <laughs> whew. Wish you could have photoshopped that one out, right? The game never released, so I'm sure to have it running flawlessly on the Sega Saturn, you'd actually have to have some final build or close to final build packaged from Sega themselves. But then again, I'm not an expert on how Sega Saturn homebrew and hacking works, so take what I say on that with a grain of salt. But as a whole, the creepypasta itself was fine. Sure, it wasn't as creepy as I thought, but that technical feasibility really pushed it back up, and it was intriguing to read just where this unreleased game was going to go. Maybe this was how uh, this game was going to be uh, released as. I don't know. Was it going to be a spooky Sonic game? <laughs> I want to see Sega attempt that. But that being said, that was Sonic Extreme a Strange Disc, and as always, I do ask you what you would rate it and what you would change to make this creepypasta better. That being said, this has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, part of Creepypastas. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.